Let me start off by saying that Peter Terry was addicted to heroin at the time. We were friends in college and continued to be after I graduated. But notice how I, that I said I. He dropped out after two years of barely cutting it. After I moved out of the dorms and into a small apartment, I didn't really hear from Peter that much though. We would talk online every now and again. AIM was the king in the pre-Facebook years, as <laughs> any 90s kid will tell you. There was a period where he wasn't online for about five weeks straight. I wasn't worried though. He was a pretty notorious flake and a drug addict. <laughs> So I assumed that he just stopped caring, but then one night I saw him online again. Before I could initiate conversation, he sent me a message. He sent me a message. Hey, David, man, we need to talk. That was when he told me about the No End House. It got its name because no one had ever reached a final exit. The rules are pretty similar and cliche. Reach the final room of the building and you win $500. Nine rooms in all. The house was located at the outside of the city, roughly four miles from my house to be exact. Apparently it tried and failed, but he also was a heroin and who knows what the fuck else addict. So I figured the drugs had gotten the best of him and he wigged out at a paper ghost or something. He told me it would be too much for anyone. That it was unnatural even. I didn't believe him, and why the fuck would I? I told him I would check it out the next night, however, and no matter how hard he tried to convince me otherwise. $500. It's, it's a good deal, and too hard to pass up. So I had to set out the following night. This is my recalling of what happened. When I arrived, I immediately noticed something strange about the building. Have you ever read one of those things that really shouldn't be scary, but some reason a chill crawls up your spine? I walked towards the building and that feeling of uneasiness and only intensified as I opened the front door. My heart slowed and I let a relief sigh leave me as I entered. The room looked like a normal hotel lobby decorated with Halloween shit. A sign was posted on the pl in place of a worker, however. It read, Room one this way. Eight more to follow. Reach the end and you win. I chuckled a bit and made my way through the first door. The first area was almost laughable. The decor resembled a Halloween aisle of Kmart complete with sheet ghosts and automatic zombies that gave a static growl when you passed by it. At the far end of the exit, the only door besides me was the one that I entered through. I brushed through the fake spider webs and headed for the second room. I was greeted by a fog as they opened the door into room two. The room definitely upped the ante in terms of technology. Not only was there a fog machine, but a bat hung from the ceiling and flew in circles. So scary, right? They seemed to have a Halloween soundtrack, one that would be in a 99 cent store on a loop somewhere in the room. I didn't see a cereal, however, but I guess they must have used a PA system. I stepped over a few toy rats and wheeled around and walked with a puffed chest across the next area. I reached the doorknob and my heart sank to my knees. I did not want to open that door. A feeling of dread hit me so hard I could barely even think. Logic overtook me, however, after a few terrified moments, and I shook it off and entered the room. Room 3 is when things began to change. On the surface, it looked like a normal room. There was a chair in the middle of the wood panel floor. A single lamp in the corner did a poor job of lighting the area. It cast a few shadows across the walls. But that was the problems. Shadows as in plural. With the exception of the chair, there were others. I had barely walked through the door and I was already terrified. It was at that moment I knew something wasn't right. I didn't even think as I automatically tried to open the door I came through. It was locked from the other side. That's what set me off. Was something? Was someone locking it as I progressed? There was no way I, I would have seen them. Was it a mechanical lock set automatically? Maybe, but I was too scared to really think. I, I turned back into the room and the shadows were gone. The chair shadow remained but the others were gone. I slowly began to walk. I used to hallucinate when I was a kid, so I wrote the shadows off as a fragment of my imagination. 
I began to feel better as I made it into the halfway point of the room. I looked down and took my steps. And that's when I saw it. Or, or didn't see it. My shadow, it wasn't there. I, I didn't have time to scream. I ran as fast as I could through the other store and I flung myself into the room beyond without thinking. The fourth room was pop possibly the most disturbing. As I closed the door, all light seemed to be sucked out and put back into the previous room. I stood there, surrounded by darkness. I couldn't move. I'm not afraid of the dark, and ha never have been, but I was absolutely terrified at the sight that left me. I held my hand in front of my face. I didn't know what I was doing, so I would never have been able to tell you. Darkness doesn't describe it. I, I I couldn't fear I couldn't hear anything. It was dead silence. When you're in a soundproof room, you can still hear yourself breathing. You could hear yourself being alive. I couldn't. I began to stumble forward after a few moments. My rapid heart beating was the only thing I could feel. There was no door in sight wasn't even sure if I wasn't even sure if there was this time the silence was broken by a low hum I felt something behind me I spun around wildly but I could barely even see my own nose I, I knew it was there though regardless of how dark it was I knew something was there the hum grew louder and louder and closer and closer it seemed to surround me but I knew whatever was causing the noise was in front of me inching Closer and closer. I took a step back. I had never felt anything like that kind of fear. I can't really describe what true fear really is, but I wasn't even scared that I was going to die. I was scared of the alternative. I was afraid what this thing had in store for me. The lights had flashed for less than a second and I saw it. Nothing. I saw nothing. I knew there was nothing there. The room was, again, plunged into darkness. And the hum was now a wild screech. I screamed in protest. I couldn't hear the goddamn sound for another moment. I ran backwards, away from the noise, and fumbled for the door handle. I turned it and fell into room 5. Before I describe room 5, you have to understand something. I am not a drug addict. I have no history of drug abuse of any sort. And psychosis, short of the childhood hallucinations, there were none. And those were only when I was really tired of just waking up. I had entered the no-end house with a clear head and off of any kind of drug whatsoever. Not even painkillers or some headache medication. After falling in from the previous room, my view of room 5 was from my back. Looking up at the ceiling, what I saw didn't scare me, but it simply surprised me. Trees had grown into the room and towered above my head. The ceiling, the ceiling in this room was taller than the others, which made me think I was in the center of the house. I got up off the flow and dusted myself off and took a look around. It was definitely the biggest room of them all. I couldn't even see the door from where I was at. Various brush and trees blocked my line of sight with the exit. Up to this point, I figured most of the rooms was gonna get scarier and scarier, but this is paradise compared to the last room. I also assumed whatever was at my back, whatever was back in room four, had stayed back there. I was so incredibly wrong. As I made my way deeper into the room, I began to hear what only one could describe as a forest. Chirping of bugs and the occasional flap of birds seemed to be my only company in this room. That was the thing that bothered me the most. I heard bugs and other animals, but I didn't see any of them. I, wonder, I wondered how big this house was. From the outside, when I first walked into it, it looked like a regular house, but it was definitely bigger. But this was a almost full forest in here. 
The, camp the canopy covered the walls and ceiling, but I assumed it was still inside the house. There, no matter how high it was. I couldn't really see any walls though. The only thing I knew was inside this was... The only reason why I knew I was inside the house is because the floor matched the other rooms. A standard dark wood paneling. I kept walking, hoping that the next tree I passed would reveal a door. After a few moments of walking, I felt a mosquito fly on my arm and shook it off and kept going. A second later, I felt about ten more land on my skin at ten different places. I felt them crawl up and down my arms and legs, and a few made their way across my face. I, fail, I flailed wildly to try to get them off, but they just kept on crawling. I looked down and let out a muffled scream. More of a whimper, to be honest. I didn't see a single bug. No bug was on me, but I could feel them crawl. I could hear them fly. My face was stinging. My skin was burning. I, but I couldn't see a single one. I dropped to the ground and began to roll wildly. I was desperate. I hated bugs, especially ones that I couldn't see or touch. But these bugs, they could touch me. And they were everywhere. I, I began to crawl. I had no idea where I was going, the entrance was nowhere in sight, and I still hadn't even seen a exit. So I just crawled, my skin was raggling with the presence of those phantom bugs. After what seemed like hours, I found a door. I grabbed the nearest tree and propped myself up, mindlessly slapping my arms and legs to with no avail. I tried to run, but I couldn't, my body was too exhausted from crawling and dealing with whatever this fucking thing was. I took a few shaky steps towards the door, grabbing each tree and the way for support. It was only a few feet away when I heard it. The low hum from before. It was coming from the next room, and it was deeper. I could almost feel it inside my body. It was like when you stand next to an amp at a concert. The feeling of bugs lessened on me as the hum grew louder. As I placed my hand on the doorknob, the bugs were completely gone, but I couldn't bring myself to turn the knob. I knew that if I let go, the bugs would return, and there was no way I could make it back to room four. I, I just stood there, my head pressed against the door, marked by a six. My hand, shaky, grasping the knob, and the hum was so loud I couldn't even hear myself pretend to think. There was nothing I could do but move on to room six. And six was hell. I closed the door behind me. My eyes held shut. My ears were ringing. The hum was surrounding me. As the door clicked, the place of the hum was gone. I opened my eyes in surprise and the door I had shut was gone. It was just a wall now. I looked around in shock, the room was almost identical to room 3, the same chair, the same lamp, but with the correct amount of shadows this time. The only real difference was that there was no exit door, and the one that I came through was now gone. As I said before, I had no previous issues with the term, I had no previous issues with mental instability, but at that moment, I fell into what I now know is insanity. I didn't scream. I didn't make a sound. At first, I scratched softly at the wall. It was so tough. But I knew the door was there somewhere. I just knew. If I scratched at it, if I just scratched where the doorknob was, I would find a door. I clawed at the wall frantically, both hands on my nails being filed down against the skin filed down the skin against the wood. I fell silently onto my knees. The only sound in the room was the incessant scratching against the wall. I knew it was there. The door was there. I knew it was there. I just couldn't get past the wall. Are you alright? I jumped off the ground and spun around in motion. I leaned against the wall behind me and I saw what it was. What that spoke to me. And to this day, I regret turning around. The little girl was wearing a soft white dress that went down to her ankles. She had long blonde hair to the middle of her back and white skin and blue eyes. She was the most frightening thing I've ever seen. And 
I know nothing in my life will ever be as unnerving as what I saw in her. While looking at her, I saw a young girl. But I also saw something else. Where she stood, I saw what looked like a naked man, only larger though, and it was covered in hair. He was naked from head to toe, but his head was not human. His toes were hooves. It wasn't a devil, but it might as well have been. The form of the head was that of a ram and the snout of a wolf. It was horrifying. And it was synonymous with the little girl in front of me. They were in the same form. I can't really describe it, but I saw it at the same time. They shared the same spot in that godforsaken room. But it was like looking at two separate dimensions. What I saw in the girl, I also saw the form. And when I saw that girl, I couldn't speak. I... I, I could barely even see. My mind was revolting against what was it, what it was attempting to process. I had been scared before my life, and I had never been more scared than when I was trapped in that fourth room. But that was before I entered room six. I stood there, staring at whatever it was that spoke to me. There was no exit. I was trapped here with it. And then it spoke again. David, you should have listened. When it spoke, I heard the words of a little girl. But the other form spoke through my mind in a voice I won't even attempt to describe. There was no other sound. The voice just kept on repeating that sentence over and over into my mind. And I agreed. I don't know what to do. I was slipping into a goddamn madness, yet, yet couldn't take my eyes off what I was seeing in front of me. I dropped to the floor. I thought I'd passed out, but the room wouldn't let me. I just wanted to end it. I was on my side. My eyes were wide open and from staring down and staring down at me, scurrying across the floor in front of me was one of the battery-powered rats from the second room. The house was fucking toying with me, but for some reason, I seeing that pulled my mind back into whatever depths it headed in, and I looked around the room, and I was gonna get out of here. <laughs> I'm gonna get out of here. I was determined to get out of that house and live and never think about this place again. I knew this room was hell, and I wasn't ready to take up res residency. At first, my eyes, they, that moved. I searched the walls for any kind of opening. The room wasn't that big, and it didn't take so long to soak up the entire layout. The demon, the demon in the room still taunted me, and the voice was growing louder as the form rooted where it stood. I placed my hand on the floor and lifted myself up onto all fours and turned to scan the wall behind me. And that's when I saw something I couldn't believe. The form was right behind me at my back, whispering into my mind. And how... How sh I shouldn't have come. I felt the breath at my back of my neck. I refused to turn around. A large rectangle stretched into the wood. A small dent shaped away in the center of it. And right in front of my eyes, I saw it. A large number seven. I had mindlessly etched it into the wall. I knew it was room seven. It was just beyond the wall. It was just right there. Right where room five was moments ago. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I knew I had done it. Maybe it was just my state of mind at the time, but I had created the door. I knew I had. In my madness, I scratched into the wall of what I needed the most. An exit into the next room. Room 7 was close. I knew the demon's weight was behind me, but for some reason it could not touch me. I closed my eyes and placed my moth hands on the large 7 in the front of me. And I pushed it. I pushed as hard as I could. The demon was now screaming in my ear. I was going to live. I was going to live. Room 6 was it. I wasn't. I pushed and screamed at the top of my lungs and I knew I would push through the wall eventually. I clenched my eyes shut and screamed and the demon was gone. I was left in silence. I turned around slowly, greeted by the room. It was just as when I entered it. 
just a chair and a lamp. I couldn't believe it. But I didn't have time to dwell. I turned back to the seven and jumped slight, slightly when I saw the door. Not one, not the one that I scratched, but a regular door with a large number seven on it. My whole body was shaking. It took me a while to actually turn the knob. I just stood there for a while, staring at the door. I couldn't stay in the room. I couldn't stay in room six. I couldn't. But this is only room six. I can't imagine what seven had in store. I must have stood there for like an hour, just staring at that seven. Finally, with a deep breath, I heaved and twisted the knob and opened the door to room seven. I stumbled through the door, mentally and physically exhausted. The door behind me was closed and I realized where I was. I was outside. Not outside like room five, but I was actually outside. My eyes stung and I wanted to cry. I fell to my knees and tried to, but I couldn't. I was finally out of hell. I didn't even care about the prize that was promised. I turned and saw the door and I just went through the entrance. I walked to my car and drove home thinking of how nice a shower sounded. I pulled up to my house and I felt uneasy. The joy of leaving the no end house has faded and dread was slowly building in my stomach. I shook it off as a residual effect from the house and made my way to the front door. I entered and immediately went to my room. The, I entered and there on my bed was my cat Barksville. He was the first living thing I had seen all night and I reached to pet him. He hissed and swiped at my hand. I recoiled back in shock, as he had never acted like that before. I thought, whatever, what, I thought, whatever, he's a fucking old cat anyway. I, I jumped in the shower and got ready for what I was expecting to be a sleepless night. After my shower, I went to the kitchen to make some food. I descended the stairs and turned into my family room, and what I saw forever burned in my mind. My parents were lying on the ground, naked, and covered in blood. They were mutilated to a near undefiable state. Their limbs removed and placed next to their bodies, their heads placed on their chest facing me. The most unsettling part was their expressions. They were smiling. They were fucking smiling. As though they were happy to see me. I vomited and snot. I vomited and sobbed there in the family room. I didn't know what happened. I, they didn't even live with me at the time. I was a mess, and when I then I saw it. A door. A door that was never there before with a large number eight scrawled in blood. I was still in the house. I was standing in my family room, but I was only in room seven. The faces of my parents smiled wider as I realized this. They weren't my parents. They couldn't be, but they looked exactly like them. The door marked with the eight was across the room behind the mutilated bodies in front of me. I knew I had to move on, but that moment I gave up. Their smiling faces torn to my mind and they grounded me where I stood. I vomited again and nearly collapsed. Then the hum returned. It was louder and than ever. It filled the house and shook the walls. The hum compelled me to walk. So I began to walk slowly, making my way closer to the door and the bodies. I could barely stand, let alone walk, and the closer I got to my parents, the closer I came to suicide. The walls were ever now so shaking it had seemed though they were going to crumble. But still, the faces smiled at me as I inched closer, their eyes followed me. I was now between the two bodies feet away from the door. The dismembered hands clawed their way across the carpet towards me. All the while the faces continued to stare. New terror washed over me as I walked faster. I didn't want to hear them speak. I didn't want to hear the voices much of those of my parents. They began to open their mouths and their hands were now inches from my feet. And, and in a dash of desperation I flung towards a lunged towards the door and threw it open and slammed it behind me. I was now in room 8. I was done after what I'd just experienced. I knew there wasn't anything else that could be that this fucking house could throw at me. 
that I couldn't live through. There was nothing short of fires in hell that I wasn't ready for. Unfortunately, I underestimated the abilities of the No End House. Unfortunately, things got more disgusting, more terrifying, and unspeakable in room 8. I still have trouble believing what I found in room 8. Again, it was a carbon copy of room 4 and 6, but sitting in the usually empty chair was a man. After a few seconds of disbelief, my mind finally accepted the fact that the man sitting in a chair was me. Not someone who looked like me, but it was David Williams. I walked closer to it. I had to get a better look at this thing, though, even though I was sure of it. He looked, up, he looked up me and I noticed tears in his eyes, or my eyes, I guess. Please, please don't do it. Please don't hurt me. Uh, what? I said. Who are you? I I'm not gonna hurt you. Yes, you are. He was sobbing now. You're gonna hurt me. And I don't want you to. He sat in a chair, his legs up, his legs up and began rocking back and forth in a very erratic motion. It was really pathetic to be honest, looking at this, especially since he was identical to me in every way. Listen, who are you? I was only a few feet from the doppelganger. It was the weirdest experience yet, standing there talking to myself. I wasn't scared, no, but I would be soon. Why are... You... You're going to hurt me! You're going to hurt me if you want to leave! You're going to hurt me! Why are you saying this? Just fucking calm down, alright? I try to figure this... And then I saw it. The David sitting down was wearing the same clothes as me. Except for a small red patch on his shirt which, embroidered, which was embroidered with the number 9. You're going to hurt me! <laughs> You're going to hurt me. Please don't hurt me. Please, you're going to hurt me. My eyes didn't believe that small letter on his chest. I knew exactly what it was. The first few doors were plain and simple, but after a while, they got a little bit more ambiguous. Seven was scratched into the wall, but by my own hands. Eight was marked in blood above the bodies of my parents, but nine... This was the number on a person, a living person, and worse still, it was a person that looked exactly like me. David, I had to ask. Yes, you're gonna hurt me. You're going to hurt me! He continued to sob and rock. He answered to David, he was me, right down to the voice, but that number nine I placed around I paced around for a few minutes while he sobbed in the chair. The room had no door, similarly to room six. The door had the door I came through was gone as well. For some reason, I assumed that the scratching would get me nowhere this time. I studied the walls and floor around the chair, sticking my head underneath, seeing if there's anything below. Unfortunately, there was. Below the chair was a knife attached to a tag that read to David from management. The feeling in my stomach as I read that tag was something sinister. I wanted to throw up. The last thing I wanted to do was remove that knife from under his chair. The other David was still sobbing uncontrollably. My mind was spinning into an addict of unanswerable questions. Who put this here? How the fuck did I get my name? Not to mention the fact that as I knelt, on, knelt down on the cold wood floor, I also sat in that chair, sobbing in protest, or uh, sobbing in protest of being hurt by myself. It was too much to process. This house and the management had been playing with me this whole time. My thoughts for some reason turned to Peter, and whether or not he could get this far. And if he did, if... And if he met a Peter Terry sobbing in this very chair, rocking back and forth? I shocked at those thoughts in my head. They didn't matter, though. I took the knife from under the chair, and immediately the other David went quiet. David? He said in my voice. 
What are you going to do? I lifted myself off the ground and clenched knife in my hand. I'm going to get out of here. David was still sitting in the chair, though he was very calm now. He looked up at me with a slight grin. I couldn't tell if he was going to laugh or strangle me. Slowly he got up from the chair, stood facing me. It was uncanny. His height and even the way he stood matched mine. I, I felt the rubber hilt of my knife in my hand, and I gripped it tighter. I didn't know what I was planning on doing with it, but I had a feeling I was going to need it. Now. His voice slightly deeper than mine. I'm going to hurt you. I'm going to hurt you, and I'm gonna keep you here. <laughs> I'm gonna kill you. <laughs> I didn't respond. I just lunged and tackled him to the ground. I had mounted him and looked down. Knife poised and ready. He looked up at me, terrified. It was like looking into a mirror. Then the hum returned, a low and distinct though I could feel it deep within my body. David looked up to me as I looked down at myself. The hum was getting louder, and I felt something in me snapped. With one motion, I slammed a knife into the patch of the chest, and I ripped it down. Blackness fell in the room, and I was falling. The darkness around me was like nothing I had experienced up to this point. Room 3 was dark, but it didn't even come close to what was completely engulfing me. I wasn't sure if I was falling after a while. I felt weightless, just covered in dark. And then a deep sadness came over to me. I felt lost, depressed, and suicidal. The sight of my parents entered my mind, and I knew it wasn't real, but I had seen it. And the mind has trouble differentiating between what is real and what it isn't, even on normal terms, let along in this surreal fantasy land. And that's exactly what it was in the end. The no end house has no end, and I had reached it. At that moment, I gave up. I knew I would be in this in-between state forever, a com accompanied by nothing but darkness. Not even the hum was there to keep me sane. I lost all sense. I couldn't feel myself. I couldn't hear anything. My sight was useless in here, and I searched for a taste of my mouth that I couldn't find anything. I felt disembodied and completely lost. I knew where I was, this clearly was hell. Nine was hell. And it happened. A light. One of those stereotypical lights at the end of the tunnel, and I felt it coming up to me from below. And I knew I was standing. After a moment or two gathering my thoughts and senses, I slowly walked up to the light. As I approached the light, it took form. It was a vertical slit down the side of a door, this time unmarked. I slowly walked through the door and found myself back where I started. The lobby of the No End House. It was exactly how I left it. Still empty. Decorated with childish Halloween decorations. After everything that happened that night, I was still wary of where I was. After a few moments of normalcy, I looked around the place trying to find something different, anything different. On the desk was a plain white envelope with my name handwritten on it. Immensely curious, yet still cautious, I mustered up the courage and opened up the envelope. Inside again was a handwritten letter. David Williams, congratulations! You made it to the end of the No End House. Please accept this prize as a token of your great achievement. Yours forever, Management. With the letter was five $100 bills. I couldn't stop laughing. I laughed what seemed like hours. I laughed as I walked into my car and laughed as I drove home. I laughed into my doorway. And I laughed as I opened my front door. And I laughed how there was a small 10 etched into the wood. <laughs> Ha 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 